be there and done this before he knows it. Tell them to round up every man with a gun and head them off. Tell them there's six of them. There was nine, two we killed, one got away when it started. That's so fast. Tell That's them so fast. They killed a Swede horse trader, wasn't even armed, just shot him down. They killed Mr. Burnside, too. He wouldn't open the vault. Tell them to kill the bank cashier, too. Did you recognize any? No. But one of them was called Jesse, and he's the Jesse, one... are you sure? Tell them it was the James boys and we hey, killed them all. Hey, it was Jesse James! Jesse James! Send that same message to Red Wing and Cato, Padilla, and every sheriff between here and the Missouri line. Tell him he's 400 miles from his own stomping ground. Tell him it's a chance of a lifetime to get Jesse James. you please, Mr. Wiley, I'll have the obituary now. Mr. Wiley, sir, the Jesse James obituary, if you don't mind. Has the word come? Have they caught up with them? No, though they say they're closer than they've been this whole week. Well, just, just touch up one of these old obituaries you wrote. The Times was reported killed before. What's the key to them, Peter? This one, about the war setting them on the path of violence. Write this one again. You and I were in the war, too. This one, about his being like Robin Hood. This is a good one. I'm getting too old for this sort of nonsense. Well, you're not leaving. Well, the obituary man, the obituary. Mm, they haven't killed him yet. Well, they may at any moment. And what do you say to the boss? What I've been saying to myself all night. What makes him Jesse James? I'd find Sheriff Bilstrom here. Yeah? I'm Barney Remy. Yeah? Oh, that's right. They brought me your telegram this morning, or was it yesterday? Boys, this is Mr. Remington. He heads up the Remington Detective Agency. What's the situation? They're trapped. Hounds run them to Earth last night. The James boys, too? The James boys, too. What are we waiting for? Well, when we rushed them at daybreak, it didn't work out so good. I got a couple of men on their way up now with blasting powder. When they're ready, they'll signal. When the rain's over, we go. Blasting powder? Don't you care about the reward? I won't be turning my back on us. You won't even be seeing it if you blow them to bits. 
Do you think the railroad and banking people I work for intend to shell out $25,000 without positive identification? We've lost a couple of men already. I couldn't identify Jesse anyway. I never heard of any law officer getting close enough to recognize him later. Not a live one, that is. Bill, give me my rifle. Sheriff, you'll take your men across the riverbed. Yeah. Mr. Remington, you want to come with us? Come on. Thank you, Mrs. Toppins. We won't forget you. Welcome. Find some other way. Jesse! Jesse. Frank! Frank! Toss out your guns, give up, you don't have a chance! If you don't surrender, we'll blast you out with dynamite! Holstrom, please, we'll never be sure. Ed. Now, now, now! This isn't Jesse. His name is Sam Wells. Where are they, Wells? Frank and Jesse and the others, where are they? Leo! Leo! Anybody else in there? in there? Nobody. He was in there by himself. A couple of you men take care of him. Get him out of here. Ed, that one of theirs? Yeah, there's blood here. Clear trail for a few feet to the other side of those reeds, and then nothing but muddy water, as far as you can see. That's all right. We got them for sure now. Yo, have your men spread out. Hold on. Now, just hold on. That's not just a mud puddle up ahead. It spreads out over half of the county. How do you figure to comb through something like that? We're going in after them. You, maybe. Not me. Nor me. So you pull your men out now, and I swear to God... Gentlemen, gentlemen. We're tired, sure, but they must be exhausted. I should tell you, my clients have authorized me to raise the reward if necessary. Looks like it's necessary. Another 5000 That makes it $30,000. All right, men, turn out that way. Yeah. All right, you men, get out along that first. Anyone see the flash? I think it came from over there. Jesse! 
Jesse, Frank, come out with your hands up. Gentlemen. photographs in our file. Are you a reporter, sir? I've written this statement for the... Uh, the press. Just tell us where to find Jesse James. <laughs> Who's Jesse James? until it gets dark. They're awful close. There must be a thousand caves in these hills. It'll take them a week to search every one. Tucker, get up there and keep watch. Bring his horse in. We ought to keep going. We'll wait till night. It'll be easier to lose them. job never did feel right to me. Don't blame me. I planned it perfectly. And why did we have to come 400 miles, all the way into Minnesota? The Missouri banks are waiting for us. We never struck here. What went wrong? We did. Not you or me, but the rest. Cole's gotten fat and slow. Dick was hitting the bottle. And Stiles. The only man who could lead us out of this state had to go and get himself killed right off the bat. I wonder how many of us are still alive. They'd all be if they'd have done what I told them. You told them to come to Northfield. That's it, Frank. That's our next job. Northfield. Are you crazy? If we ever get out of here, we're not coming back. It'll be the last place they'd expect us to hit. Well, I'm not worried about our next job. I'm just thinking about getting home. That's all it's eaten me. We'll get home. We'll be home in time for my birthday. Ma's expecting us. Yeah, poor Ma. She's probably worried sick. Not Ma. She stood off the Yankee army for years. Nothing bothers her. The Yankees drove him to it. He's a good boy. You're his wife, see? You know how kind he is. Try to sleep, Mr. Samuel. Oh. You know, once he brought home a bird that had fallen from its nest. His father was alive then. And little Jesse wouldn't be comforted until Reverend James gave the little bird a funeral service. Jesse always was a gentle boy. The preacher. I go fetch preacher Bailey. I wanted to help me pray for my boys. For my Jesse and my Frank. I'll send Robbie for him. Robbie, is he here? You remember he brought Z over this morning. Why is he always hanging around here? Try to rest. Uh, how's your wife, Dr. Samuel? She wants to see Preacher Bailey. Fetch him like a good boy, will you, Robbie? You know, Z. Jesse was no older than that boy. And he had to become a man. That was early in the war. The Yankees came riding down on this farm. And he 
neighbors dragged me out of the kitchen. You help the soldiers. You two search that barn and search Stop it. Stop it! Stop it! Why don't you leave us be? What do you want from us? Where's your son, Frank? Where he should be. Fighting for the South. Missouri has taken sides with the North. Any man from this state who joins the South is a traitor. We shoot traitors. Well, you better shoot me, then. Because if I were a man, I'd be right there with my son, Frank. Frank was here last night. I saw him right by my farm. Where are you hiding him, woman? We've been neighbors for 20 years, Mr. R.Q. The shame of you spying on us! I serve my country as I see fit. I never did hold with slavers. We never owned a slave. But you're holding with the South. <sighs> this man has always hated real Southerners. He's just using you to drive us out. For giving comfort to the enemy, I can burn your house and shoot everybody on the farm. You better tell us where your son is hiding. Well, he only stayed a minute to kiss me hello and goodbye. By now, he's back with his own company. She's lying, Sergeant. Lying. Who are they? That's Huey, the hired hand. And this is Jesse. Frank's younger brother. Now, son, you don't want to see your mother hurt. Just lead us to your brother, Frank, and we'll go peaceably. We won't harm Frank, either. Just take him prisoner. He'll be out of the war and safe in some nice prison camp. We'll be doing him a favor. I... I guess I can trust you, mister. But I don't trust you, you... I give you my word, we won't hurt your brother. Now, where is he? Seems to me you're going to a lot of trouble to catch one soldier. Let me at him, Sergeant. I'll make him talk. I'm in command here, Mr. RQ. We know Frank is riding with Quantrill's raiders. We're after Quantrill, not you folks. Not even your brother. Just want to ask him a few questions. If the answer's right, we might even let him go. Frank won't give Quantrell away. Supposing you let Frank decide that for himself. Where can we find him? When did he leave here? Which way did he ride? Maybe you had better ask him. Beat it out of here, but it takes all night. Whipping a boy won't get us, Quantrill. Come on, we wasted enough time here already. Let him go. Someday. Someday what? to join Frank. Oh, you're too young. Mama, if I'm old enough to be whipped, I'm old enough to fight back. Jesse was so young, it hurt to see him go. But he had fight in him, and he served the Confederacy well. At the war's end, we got word from Frank that Jesse had been badly wounded, and so we set out to bring them home, Reuben and me and our little boy, Archie. Z, you remember the day when we stopped by Rufus Cobb's house on our way home with poor Jesse? If they think they're staying here... They've had such a hard time, Ruth. And they are kinfolk. Yours, not mine. What happened? A fight with Federal soldiers two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, but the war's been over a month. Not for them. For the regular soldiers, yes, but not for guerrilla outfit. They don't recognize them as soldiers. We were trying to surrender when it happened. 
We had a white flag. Jesse was carrying it. Blam, they opened up on us. We weren't even armed. Come on, bring him into the house. It's Jesse. He's been badly wounded. I don't care how bad he's wounded. He can't stay here. Oh, Rue, you can't. Every moocher in the Confederacy comes knocking at this door. Major Cobb, I served under you at Bull Run. Major Cobb, we were Chickamauga together. Wouldn't be for long. So you said when you brought your sister here more than a year ago. I do chores. I don't eat much. Then I'm leaving him here. It's only 70 miles more to your place. You can look after him there. Oh, I'm afraid. He's grown so weak. I'll look after him. We just don't have room. He can stay in the attic. I'll sleep in the kitchen. It's only until we get the farm in shape and he's strong enough to go further. Don't make us stand here and beg. We're not begging. It's not charity, Rufus. Frank will come and work for you every other week. You'll be paid for all of it. If you say no, you'll get paid for that, too. No threat? It's a fact. Like the weather. Roof, what? A man tries to get ahead and save every penny? Bah. I'll see you later. Just not fair. Yes. Does he even shave yet? About once a month. He seems so lost. If someone cared, maybe... Maybe she could find him. Me? I'm as much of a stray as he is. Then maybe you could help him find you. for the way grown-ups live. That's silly. That's silly, Jesse. We'll soon be grown-ups ourselves. I'm grown-up already. Oh, you're younger than I am. Friends my age are married. Some have children. You thinking about marriage, see? Of course. Having a home that's mine. Children? Don't you ever think about the future? Mostly about the past. Never about the way you'd like things to be? I just want them to be nice. Nice? You know, nice. I hope you get everything you want, Sid. I can't think of anyone I'd rather see happy. Thank you, Jesse. What's the matter? Aren't I pretty enough to kiss? Don't tease me. I'm wanting it. About what? Your hidden fires? Little something for you both to eat on the way. Oh, thank you, Rowena. Come on, Jesse. No need to itemize that. Just tell me how many more days I owe for Jess's keep. You worked all five weeks for him. You owe me one more full week. Say goodbye, Zerola. There's work to do. Major Cobb, I'm asking for Z's hand in marriage. Oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> You've money put by? Not a cent. And the farm belongs to your mother? That's right. I'd be pleased to see her married off, but she's been here over a year. I say I'm due something for that. I'm not giving consent till it's paid. It'll be paid. Thought about how? I'm through thinking. I'm just gonna do it. 
Well, I've cleared and planted our field. That should yield a good crop. Done and done. If hard work can do it, Z, you'll have that home of your own. I promise. Goodbye, Rowena. Thanks for everything. I'll be back next week to work out the last of it. Let's trade. Put us up at your place for that revival end of summer. We'll call it even. Ken are always welcome. Being beholden always costs more in the end. Do you think your crop will be in? I'll bring the girl. We'll have the wedding. Done and done. Jesse came home strong again. And he'd fallen in love with you. Those were happy days, Eve. Oh, why couldn't things stay that way? Who is that coming? It's Robbie and the Reverend. Jesse. God's grace. That's what the name signifies. Well, that sure don't seem to fit, does it? It did once. There was a time when I saw the Holy Spirit blazing in his eyes, Charlie. I'm not Charlie. No, I'm Robbie. Robbie? Oh, yes. Matty Ford's youngest boy. Getting any better, Mrs. Samuel? Sorry to be troubling you so often, Reverend. Will you help me pray again for my Jesse and my Frank? My prayers are for you, Mrs. Samuel, and for all here, to give you strength and to ease your suffering. As for your sons, treading the path of the unrighteous, breaking God's laws as well as man's, steeped in sin beyond redemption. That's not true. How can you say that about Jesse? You who baptized him. Yes, I baptized him. But you know what he did less than three hours later with salvation in his grasp. Let the devil enter into his heart and has lodged him there ever since. No. Only Satan could have prompted him. No. There's no other explanation. You're wrong. I know what happened that night. change your lives for the future in the name of the Holy Ghost. I am. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Salvation. That was rousing testimony, Cousin Jesse. How's it feel to have all eyes upon you? Why, in my fervor, Cousin Cole, I never noticed. Jesse had peace in his heart then and a dream for our future. But that night his neighbors, who were northern sympathizers, shattered that peace and broke our dream. <laughs> Mama, you and Archie better not see this. What is it? It's Huey. They've done something bad to him. The 
war's over, isn't it? But those Yankee farmers won't stop their killing. They came down on us last night. They strung up poor Huey. Burned our crop and they... They shot up the house. Well, let's saddle up and start burning some Yankee farm. Too many of them. Missouri's a southern state. We were here first. No Yankees pushing me off my land. Why'd you call us here, Frank? Well, we gathered here to give Huey a good send-off. As you know, he worked with us and he fought right alongside of us. Jesse, he's got something to say that might be interesting to you. The war has sapped us bone dry. Every bank in the state of Missouri is owned by a Yankee man. They hate our hide and want us to get out. Those banks have got a lot of northern money rolling in. I want my share. I don't hold with breaking the law. Yeah, you haven't raised any crops since you've been out of uniform. How are you living? Well, hustling a few horses and some livestock. It's not exactly like robbing a bank. I don't say we make a career out of it. Just one or two robbers to get each one of us a stake. So we can get our homes and farms whipped into shape. That kind of talk figures coming from you, Jesse. But I don't see it resting so easy on you, Frank. Well, when Jesse first mentioned the plan, I didn't cotton to it too quick. I took pause to wonder. Wonder what Paul would do. He was a reverend, you know. I think some of your boys knew him. He was a good man, Frank. But he was. He, sure but he was. was a southerner, and he had a lot of pride. And I still have some of that pride, and I'm not going to go through life being trampled on. I hold with that, Frank. Now, look, I don't know about the rest of you, but I need me a new barn, some tools and some seed. I'll ride along with you, Jesse. But only once. How do you say, Cole? Well, robbing a bank's not exactly child's play. It's gonna take a lot of thinking, a lot of planning. And more, it's gonna take a leader. Jesse will lead us. You said. I do. It was Jesse's idea in the first place. But before I ride behind a man, I've got to know how he's thinking. If you were to lead us, Cole, and you had a plan, what would you do? Well, I'd... The nine of us would ride into town fast, shoot fast, grab the money, and ride out fast. Speed and nerve, that's all it takes. Where would we ride out to? We'd haul up in the hills until everything got quiet. That's about as sure a way of getting hung I know of. The Army troops have got scouts that know those trails like the Indians. What you're thinking? If we were to ride out of here now, we could go to Liberty and get there by the time the bank opens in the morning. We could ride back here in time for supper. The day after, we can start milking again and mending our fences. And while the law's searching the hills for the robbers, we'll just be peaceable farmers minding our chores. I like that, Jesse. That's real smart, Jess. Well, how do you stand on it, Cole? It's gonna be a real pleasure riding by Jesse James. that they were outside the law and I went home again to live with my sister. I didn't hear from Jesse but I heard about him as the time passed. Jesse. 
Will you go with me now? Oh, right now. Z and I are going to be married. Do we have your consent? You do. Z. Z. Jesse, wait. You can't. The law's after you, Jesse. You're hunted. Let them hunt. Well, think of Z. She's all I do think of. But where will you live? Where no one can find us. Now, don't worry, Romeo. Everything's going to be nice. One of the finest properties in St. Joe. Complete privacy, but only a stone's throw from the business section. And a view of the city in every direction. Unwelcome visitors are coming. You can see them first and hide. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Howard, I hope you like the furnishings. All Mr. Howard told me was fix it up nice. Oh, it's... Very nice. Perhaps I uh, spent more than I should. Not if she likes it. And uh, the first month's rent, if you don't mind, $18. Pleasure to do business with you, Mr. Howard. What line did you say you were in? Railroads and banking, in a small way. Mm. Good, solid enterprises, both of them. No risks, no worries, am I right? That's right. You can put those down there, will you please? Sure. And will you wait outside for me? Anything else I can do? Yes. I don't hold with this sort of thing. It's indecent. Venus and Mars by Rubens. Oh, it's pretty. Couldn't we pretend it's Adam and Eve? And Mrs. Howard will find something of her own to put up there. Something uplifting. Mr. Grundy, we're very grateful to you. Sure. A nice, genteel couple like yourselves helps keep property values high. Good day. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yes. We have a home of our very own. Seven rooms, Z. And a garden. Z, if things go well, I'm going to build a summer house out there. Well, we will sit and I'll serve tea to the ladies. And I'm going to buy a gig. Nope, a Surrey. And we'll go for drives. And we'll nod to our neighbors. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. And we'll have lots of children. And on Sundays, we'll all walk to church together. And on Christmas Eve, I'll play Santa Claus in a long white beard. And Fourth of July, we'll run up a flag and shoot off firecrackers. <laughs> And on evenings, we'll all sit here and sing hymns and read Mr. Dickens. Then I'll put out the cat. And we'll go to bed. Z, I have to go now. Oh, Jesse. Now, Z, remember your promises. Never any questions. No questions. You're Mrs. Thomas Howard. I'm Mr. Howard. I'm a businessman whose affairs require him to travel. Now, while I'm gone, you busy yourself with our house and miss me. When I'm back, Life will be good for both of us. All right? Goodbye, Zay. There's no devil in Jesse's heart. He's just a man who loves his family. And his home. Whatever he's done, he's done for no other reason. I'm going home. Goodbye, Mother Samuel. Goodbye, dear. Try to bear up. Thanks for coming, Z. And don't give up hoping. I never have. I figured we'd be back in Missouri by now, eating fried chicken. 
Some of those boys will never taste beans again. Yeah, we sure had rotten luck. I don't count on luck. If every man had done what he'd been told to, we wouldn't be stuck here. I cut those telegraph wires clean through, just like you told me to, Jesse. What time did you cut them? What difference does it make now? I'm asking you a question, Tucker. 2.30, like you said I should. Show me your watch. We have the same time. But if you'd have cut the lines at exactly 2.30, they wouldn't have been able to wire out to the other towns to make up the posses. But they did. I don't know how. What's this, Tucker? I don't know. I don't know how it got there. Think! Try to remember! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. I bought it on the trip up here. A present to give to a gal I was going with. A single guard? Oh, there must be another one around. You're a liar. You got this from that fat farm girl you had your eye on back there. She's why you were late cutting the wires. Keep the horses steady. No, Jesse. No. Killing's not going to help us. It'll help me. I'm not going to have it, Jesse. All right, Tucker, get up there. Yeah, yeah. That posse's still out there, and it's a long time till dark. So just take it slow. It's the first time you cross me, Frank. Are you out of your mind, Jesse? There were ten of us started out for Northfield, and there are only three of us left. You're no spot to push anybody around, not even Tucker. What's to stop me? $25,000. <laughs> he wouldn't have the nerve. Mm -hmm. Well, he might if you turned your back on him. You know, Remington doesn't care who he pays that reward to, so don't start pushing Tucker around. You should have let me kill him. You really like killing, don't you? It comes easy in our business. Well, is that why you chose the business, so you could go on killing? You've done your share. Well, I'm not proud of it. Well, I am. Jesse James. That name means something. And when those Yankee bankers hear it, they start shaking. You weren't satisfied with the banks, were you? You had to start on the railroads. We did a good business with the railroads. Yeah, if you're talking about the money we took. But that's when our luck started to turn bad.
How much we get? Oh, we met expenses. Where now? Food and sleep. Where? It's all been arranged. Bill did it. I hope they've got big beds, Ryan. <laughs> yeah! Fine a breakfast, ma'am, as I ever ate. It's a pleasure to serve gentlemen of taste. Oh, that must be a special kind of book you're looking at there to make you forget your belly. It is. Very special and very fine. It says here that Jesse James really isn't a criminal, that he's just misunderstood. Why does he rob? Why does he plunder? He gives it all to the poor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, he robs the rich to help the needy. <laughs> Oh, it's all I can do to keep the tears back. Let me see that, Paul. <laughs> well, I wish he'd rob a train with a rich load of people and give all the money to me. What do you need money for, ma'am, with this fine home and farm? Mortgage to the hilt. You have a mortgage, madam? As big as your arm. Six hundred dollars is what I owe, and I ain't got six cents to my name. Well, how are you going to pay it, ma'am? Well, I guess I can't. Man comes around most every morning now looking for his money. Guess I'll have to go to live with my kinfolk in Davis County. I bet I can make Jesse pay this mortgage. Oh. How much do I owe you, madam? Oh, say 10 cents. How much is a train ticket to Davis County? About $8. Why? Well... Here's 20, for your hospitality, of course. Next time you hear people talk about Cole Younger, you tell him he's not as bad as he's painted. Let's get going. Are you Cole Younger? Well, bless you, son, bless you. Mrs. Keeby, how much did you say the mortgage was? $600, Mr. French, and it might just as well be six million. Well, here's the $600. Compliments of Jesse James. <laughs> Jesse James. That's right. And you be sure and get a receipt for it. She'll talk about you, all right. And what a noble man you are. Praise be. You can trust that bell clapper of a tongue of hers. But it cost you $600. <laughs> Did it? Learn a lesson, Jesse. You can't eat your cake and have it, too. Maybe so, Cole. But bread cast upon the water comes back before many days. charge of committing armed robbery of the St. Louis Midland Railway 
we find the defendant guilty. The court is aware of efforts by friends and sympathizers of the James brothers and their followers to intimidate. It therefore commends the jury for the courage shown in fulfilling its duty. The court also congratulates the prosecutor. This is the first time that a member of the James gang has ever been convicted. If you agree to help the state locate and arrest the James brothers, I will consider it in passing sentence. Why not do it, Ryan? I sentence you to 25 years in the state penitentiary. <laughs> Never thought we'd get a conviction. Neither did I. Mr. Howard. Nice job. Thank you. This is Mr. Woodson. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Walker's a neighbor of mine. Interesting trial, wasn't it? We were interested, weren't we? Very. It's the first time I've been to a court trial. It's the beginning of the end for the Jameses, you know. I wonder if they'll recognize it. It's certainly something for them to think about. Yes, isn't it? You found this trial interesting. Try to be there when I prosecute Frank and Jesse. Well, it's good seeing you. Come on, let's go. We couldn't miss it, could we? I don't see how. It was cold without you by my side. Black girl, black girl. Mr. Remington? I'm Walker, state's attorney. They have the warrants for the James brothers? Here they are. Thank you for drawing them up on such short notice. Hello there. Good evening. This is Howard. Mr. And Ms. Woodson. Going on a trip? Visiting relatives downstairs. Oh. Mr. Howard, I'd like you to meet Mr. Remington. Barney Remington. Of the Remington Detective Agency. How do you do, sir? It's no secret. I want everyone to know. I have come to Missouri to put an end to Frank and Jesse James and every other thief. You want folks to know? I want the James boys to know that the price on their heads will be big enough to corrupt their friends and even members of their own gang, and that my men will be amongst them so that no criminal can ever be sure who is a friend or who is an enemy. Some folks don't consider the James boys to be so bad. They murdered four of my best men this past year. Murdered? Could have been self-defense. Self-defense? The schoolboy they shot while robbing the Liberty Bank? The unarmed cashiers whose brains they've blown now, right out of the screen. Please, the ladies. My apologies. Oh! You may not be aware of it, sir, but many of the crimes attributed to the James brothers were actually committed by others. It's a fact well known here in Missouri. Uh, if you'll excuse us, please. Mr. Ruddy. That's what I'm up against around here. Yes, public opinion. Or better yet, public need. Jesse James is the shooting spokesman for everyone whose life is quietly desperate. To you, he's a thief. To these people, he's already becoming a legend. One that kindles a fire in their hearts. They want him to go on. You're trying to tell me that nothing can be done? Mr. Remington, you can't change public opinion when it suits you. When the public no longer needs Jesse James, that'll be the end of him. <laughs> Doctor, why have we stopped? Special business, ma'am. We'll only be here a minute. Well, we should be about a mile from Mama's. In the daytime, we might be able to see the house.
What is it? What's wrong? I think the girls better take the next train back to St. Joe. Come on. That was Remington and Walker. I didn't see them get on the train. They must be heading for Ma's place. Someone tipped them off. We'd be there. We gotta beat them. They won't do anything to Ma if we're not there. I'm not waiting to see. Jesse! Frank! We know you're there. Come on out. Come on out or we'll blow you out. your help, Mr. Argue. We were sitting up waiting for you. Men came and yelled for you to surrender. We told them you weren't here, but they wouldn't believe us. We were afraid they'd shoot, so we put out the light. And then, see what they did to Archie. Frank, on the south side. Remington Detective Agency. It's a shame and an outrage, Frank. I've never been a supporter of yours or of Jesse's, but I don't hold with persecuting a man or his family. I want you to know we're going to do something about it. Thank you. Some of us are going up to the state capitol tomorrow morning. We're going to tell our congressman just what we think. Oh, boy. Amnesty. The governor's being asked to grant amnesty to you both. And invite them to return to the peaceful pursuits from which they were driven. I can't wait to have your mother see you. What's the matter, Jesse? Put it out of mind, boys. You got too much at stake. We're not gonna do anything. We're staying out of trouble. Everyone knows he spied for the Remingtons. He won't find the living easy around here from now on. You gotta be satisfied with that, Jesse! Thank you, Robbie. You shot RQ. You said you were avenging little Archie's death and Mama's arm being blown to bits. But your shots made certain we could never turn back from this kind of life. They kept us on the same dirty road, the road which finally led us to Northfield and disaster.
Well, what's it going to be all about this time, boys? Anybody know? The bank in Northfield. Northfield? What part of Missouri is that? It's not Missouri. It's Minnesota. Minnesota? That's right. Right here. Hello, Bob. Cousin Jesse? Jim. Jesse? That's over 400 miles from here. 420. 420 miles? How am I going to get there? Your horse. <laughs> Why Northfield? Tell him, Bill. Well, it's a dinky little town, but they've got a bank up there that's never been touched. Jesse sent me to look it over last month. Cash on hand, seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars. Satisfied? No, we've never gone that far on a job before. That means they won't expect us. But if something goes wrong, Jesse, none of us here knows the territory. Bill knows it. He lived there. I told him to scout every trail between there and the Missouri line, and he has. Well, Jesse, I'm going to skip this one. I wouldn't. Well, what do you think, Cole? Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think I've led you and led you well. I think I'm giving you a chance to make enough money to retire on. And I also think all I have to do is snap my fingers like this, and I get plenty of men to take your place. When do we start, Jesse? Right now. Robbie, Charlie, get the new coats for the boys. People will really talk about this one, won't they, Jesse? They're going to really sit up and take notice, Cole. Sure they will. We were just coming in to say goodbye. Jesse. I saw the look on Cole's face and the others as they were leaving. They were just thinking about the ride ahead of them. They've gotten soft. Now, Z, I'm having Robbie take you and Anna to St. Joe. When I get back, in about a month, I'll buy you the prettiest frocks in town. Jesse, will this really be the last one? Of course. No, really. Really, Jesse. The very last one. When I come home, I'll have enough money to invest in some small business. And then I'll never have to leave you or the children again. Oh, if it only would turn out that way. I'm so sick of telling lies, especially to the children. Don't worry about it. Will it be all right, Frank? Oh, sure, Z. You could see how good Jesse's feeling. Oh, yes. Now he's excited. Now he's on his way to something. But to what? I don't think we'll know until he finds it. I'll watch over him, Z. Aren't you going to wave goodbye? Doesn't seem right. Just doesn't seem right. What doesn't? All of it. Stop worrying. I'm not the only one. Tucker doesn't seem to be worried. Tucker's too stupid to worry. Dick seems happy enough. One of the reasons it doesn't seem right. He should be sweating bullets. Look at Cole. Cole hasn't cracked a smile for the last hundred miles. He'll laugh and sing for 200 with the money on his way back. Jesse, call it off. Call it off? This is one raid that can't fail. We've got the best horses you or anyone else has ever seen. Bill Stiles knows this country like the back of his hand. I've never planned anything so well. I've never known you to feel so much planning was needed. Yo! I'll remind you about this when we get home. Yes, Bill? Northfield's half mile ahead. 
Any questions? Now, just you leave it to us, Jesse. We'll keep the road clear for the getaway. Feeling good, huh, Dick? I never felt better. I wonder why. You know I don't allow drinking on the job. Well, I only had a little nip, I swear it. We can settle it on the way back. Get going. Do you want me to go over it again, Cole? Sure. My mind's all in a whirl. I've never robbed a bank before. Come on, boys. I hate to disturb you. Tell me what you're going to do. Me? I'm going to climb the pole and cut the wires. At what time? Hmm, about 2.30. Not about 2.30, at 2.30. At 2.30. Tucker, if the alarm gets out of Northfield past you, I'll kill you. It won't. Let me see the cutters. And your watch. Sam, remember what I told you. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? I'd like to open an account. Mm, be with you right away. Det var vackra hästar hör ni. Var kommer de ifrån? What? Ja, de hästarna. De är inte uppfostrade här inte. Go away, no speak. Go away. Mitt namn är Jörgensen. Jag föder hästar. Skulle ni vilja handla va? Go away, no speak. Thank you very much. Get out of here. Will you get out of here? He don't understand English. Uh, he's a horse trader. Wants to buy your horse. Skulle ni vilja handla, va? Oh, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. Jesse. Mr. Harris. And Mr. Burnside. How do you... Just open the vault and there won't be any trouble. No. We'd admire it if you would. No, I, I can't. Help! Help! Robbers! Oh. 
just stand here and keep your mouth shut. I do it. Uh. Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! What else could I do? This way, Jesse! Look out, Bill! since the war, Jesse. But Northfield was the end of the road for all of us. It's all Tucker's fault. If he'd have cut the wires on time, we wouldn't be stuck in this rotten hole. It wasn't Tucker's fault. That Northfield job fell apart right in town. Everything went wrong. Why? Why did everything go right for so long, and now nothing seems to happen the way it should? Because in the beginning, we had a reason. But you wouldn't remember it. What reason? Well, in the beginning, it was for Z and Ma and protecting the farm. We did what we had to. What are we doing here now, 400 miles from home? Who are we fighting for? Ma? Z? No, Jesse. We're doing this for you. For me? I've carried you and Cole and the rest on my back for years. If it wasn't for me, you'd all be sharecroppers on some miserable farm. Oh, sure, we're a big success now, aren't we? Everybody knows our name. Well, they ought to. It's on every post office wall. Well, if you don't like my company, mister, let's break it off right now. Well, mister, that suits me just fine. Mr. 
Maybe you'd like to collect a reward on the way back. Don't waste your bullets on me, Mr. Jesse James. Ma, I'll be waiting for you. Tell her how you walked out on me. Listen, you can get this straight, too. I'm not walking out on you. We're going our separate ways. You know something? I used to think I was just following you. But now I'm not so sure that I wasn't pushing you. I never even knew you rode behind me, Frank. That's how important you were. Well, maybe you didn't, Jesse. But I was always there looking out for you. So why don't you take my advice and from now on look out behind you? Jesse? Jesse or Frank? I don't know. Jesse! Too bad one of us couldn't have gone to get Jesse's body instead of having to send Z. It's time we get started for the depot. You'll see that Jimmy stays covered. He always kicks the covers off. Oh, don't worry about the children, Z. I'll take good care of them. I've told them I'm visiting their grandma. I should have stayed with him. Don't feel that way, Frank. It ended the way it had to sooner or later, and, and no one could have prevented it. No one's to blame. You don't want to miss the train. Jesse! you they found up north. I just knew it. I saw it more like Tucker. You put your watch in his pocket to throw him off, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Charlie, go tell Z to come in. Yeah. I'm sorry I left you. But I just had to, Jess. You were right, Frank. Northfield was the end. For you, me, everyone. What am I going to do? What do you want to do? I don't think I've ever really known. Right now, I just want to live in peace somewhere. Jesse's just saying that he's willing to give the whole thing up for good. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, Jesse. Couldn't we get a farm someplace? I've always wanted us to have a farm. Do you remember that farm in Nebraska? Mm -hmm. That's the prettiest one I ever saw. Do it, Jesse. I'll never ask for anything more in my life. We 
you haven't any money. What about your house, eh? It's rented. Even the furniture. You're not just talking, are you? I swear it. Well, Ann and I have a little money, and Mama has some, I know. No. No, I can't do that. Well, we want you to have it. How long will it take you to get packed? No time at all. Oh, I'll help, and so will the boys. Charlie, Robbie. Sure. Well, I can catch the late train tonight to Mama's and be back here in the morning. You're going to have that farm, Jesse. Right. Thanks. Oh, Jesse, I've never been so happy. Now, call the children in. I want to get them dressed. Oh, and would you take that down for me? What do you want this? I'll put it in the hall. Thanks a lot for helping me, boys. Sure. Get it. We're only two glasses. I'll be right back. You're not going out like that, are you? I forgot about that. I won't be needing these anymore. Do you want them? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Jess. Upstairs. Go on. Your mother wants you. We're uh, going to miss you, Jess. You never will get a chance to ride with you now. You're not missing anything. Why? I always thought you enjoyed it. I did. The excitement, being in command. You never get a chance to relax. Look at me. 34 years old and I feel like 90. I didn't know the lawmen bothered you that much. They didn't. But as the rewards go higher, your friends grow fewer. They're either killed off or turn against you. Then you worry about the old ones who might be tempted by the rewards. Or the new ones who hope to get a reputation by putting a bullet in you. Yeah. The reward for you is up to... $25,000 now. 30000 Alive or dead. And if you don't think I expect someone to try to put a bullet in me, you're wrong. Well, you'll never get a chance. What makes you so sure? Is it 
really, Jesse James? Please, go away. What is, what, Let what us is through, please. What Let is, us through. Oh, Jesse! Get out! Get out, all of you! Did they really get Jesse? How about Frank? They get him, too? No, but I expect he'll give himself up now. Jesse James was a man who lived outside the law and no one knew his face. He was killed one day in the county of Clay and he came from a solitary race. Jesse came to the end with his back turned to a friend, a friend he thought was brave. And the dirty little coward who shot Mr. Howard has laid 